Frontier have reset all global community efforts in the Great Thargoid War. It turns out this is the intended mechanics of the in-game war simulation. Here's how it works. The Thargoids invade a particular star system. The players are then given a set time frame to repel the Thargoids before the star system becomes abandoned. This may be seven weeks. Now, during this time, players will conduct war efforts. Maybe this will be destroying the Thargoids outright fighting them, or maybe it will be humanitarian aid via rescuing people from the damaged stations. Either way, all of this global community collective effort contributes towards successfully repelling the Thargoids. Assuming, that is, the community reaches 100% on that particular star system's war effort progress bar. There is a twist, however, and players recently discovered this much to their surprise. It turns out that the players are given just seven days to repel the Thargoids. Whatever progress is reached within that seven-day time frame, if it isn't 100%, so maybe it's 50%, maybe it's 99%, anything less than 100%, will be a reset at the end of the seventh day and set back to a zero. So that means all of the community effort that is put into defending and protecting a particular SAR system counts for nothing unless 100% completion is reached. But hang on a minute, didn't I just say that the community gets a time window to complete this war effort? Maybe seven weeks? Well, it turns out yes, that is the case, but it's not a total of seven weeks. Instead, it is seven chances. So if players have seven weeks to repel the Thargoid effort, each week that progress is reset unless it reaches 100%, so therefore seven chances. If it's five weeks, five chances, six weeks, six chances, and so on. Now in terms of how this actually plays out, well, it turns out that the community have been conducting massive efforts to wage war and defend the system against the Thargoids in the star system HIP 237716. Now, here are some stats for that. You can see right at the top, HIP 237716, total population of 1.8 million, a total kill rate of 158,000, along with 1.6 million rescues. Very interesting, actually, because that is a huge chunk of the population. 1.6 million people out of 1.8 million were rescued. So, how did all of this measure? Well, it gave a little over 50% completion rate for that particular star system. It seemed quite natural that within the second week of the war, players would be able to continue on from that kill rate, that percentage rate, and eventually reach 100%. However, that wasn't to be the case, as on the server tick, this was reset back to 0%. And no, it's not a bug. This is completely intended, as you can see here by this forum post from Frontier. Understandably, players are very surprised it actually works this way, and some are even disheartened. It seems like quite a wasted effort after all, doesn't it? Personally, I'd even go as far to say that this is an extremely weird game design choice. Why Frontier would do this is really a mystery. Obviously, the Thargoid War is very new, so that means, well, as with many wars, the initial phase of things can be very, very devastating. The Thargoids have turned up Independence Day style, causing devastation across many star systems. It makes sense that the human efforts that humanity itself was caught off guard and faced massive cataclysms. So yeah, repelling some of this or even any of it in the first week would be very, very unlikely indeed. So the way to deal with this, how could Frontier have deal dealt with this in another way? Well, they just control the numbers, they control the difficulty. If they don't want players to reach 100% within a set time frame, just change the kill rate, just adjust the rescue ratio that's needed or whatever else to reach that 100%. So you slow players down, well, they're actually noticing or actually feel, uh, feeling that they have been slowed down. What you don't do is reset their efforts. You don't reset all of their work back to zero. That is, well, 101 in game design, I would have thought. Very, very odd. Now, Frontier have said it's likely they will be looking at the numbers here and adjusting them accordingly to make things either easier or more difficult, depending on what they feel is appropriate. What they haven't said, though, is whether or not they will change the reset mechanics. The numbers themselves, how difficult or how hard it is to repel the Thargoids from a particular star system, really is a moot point. Again, it's the reset that is a contentious subject. 
Now, stepping away from that for just a moment and looking at the broader picture, we do know that all of this is a part of an ongoing narrative for Elite. Now, the Thargoids are here. They're going to invade. They're going to cause chaos. Frontier have confirmed that at some point they will wipe out the bubble. Uh, well, left, uh, left unchallenged, that is. Ultimately, it all means there are more parts to this story that we haven't yet seen. That means likely new technologies will be developed. Maybe there'll be a deus ex machina, the gods coming down and saving humanity from the Thargoids. Maybe there'll be another salvation-like character. Or perhaps Frontier will give a new advanced weaponry that players will have to unlock. All of this, of course, over time could well make it easier to defeat the said Thargoids, defeat these up, or make it easier for the whole war effort. So yeah, quite naturally, no one's asking for easy mode, we all, I think, suspect and expect that the Thargoid war, the Thargoid conflict, is indeed going to be very difficult and is indeed going to pose a challenge, as it should. It's also likely that over time, as players get used to how the mechanics work, as well as as new in-game technology gets unlocked, the whole process will become somewhat easier. Although, in a way, that does beg another question, doesn't it? If things are guaranteed or expected to get easier in the future as new gameplay becomes available or new assets, technology, modules, weapons, whatever, become available, what is the point in playing for the moment? Why not wait for this future technology? That, though, is kind of a rhetorical question. Now, here is another point with the current state of the war. Remember, that massive coordinated community effort went into defending HIP 23716. And despite all that effort, players only reached 50% completion. Now, again, Frontier may adjust the numbers here to make it easier to reach that 100% goal, or they may make it harder. But either way, if it takes a week to defend one system and repel the Thargoids, and keep in mind that over that time, each week, potentially, many new systems are attacked and start burning, well, it's raging against a fire that can never be put out. For every new 10 fires that appear, players are only capable of putting out one lone single fire. Of course, that does go back to the whole narrative point we discussed a moment ago that, yes, the war is meant to feel intimidating. It's obviously intended to be an existential threat. But yeah, the players are meant to feel that just maybe humanity won't survive this. So, in the end, I kind of break this down into two separate components. We've got the narrative side of things, the story side of things. Well, yeah, it all does make sense, doesn't it? This tends to be how many real-world wars over history have played out. It's very much a side kind of fog of war, that unknown. But perhaps that applies to the real world, should it really apply to an online game? In terms of online games, it means that players are flying blind. It means they're flying into the unknown. It means that without in-game mechanics and menus, systems, or whatever, to notify them of exactly what's going on, they have real, no world way of measuring what their efforts are achieving. And this is only compounded and made worse when they see those efforts eventually reset to zero. For now then, we can only sit back and wait and see what happens. Whether or not Frontier make an announcement and discuss this a little bit, or whether they adapt the game itself is something we're just going to have to wait and see. For now, it's going to be interesting to see how many players continue to fight the Thargoids and how many feel so disheartened they're going to step back for a while and just, uh, well, wait and see. At any rate, do let me know your thoughts and feelings on all of this in the comments section below. What are your thoughts about the current state of things with the Thargoid War? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.